Good evening, church. Welcome. We are delighted that you're joining us tonight. We're uh, going to spend some time praising the Lord and praying, and then we're going to take a look at the ministry of the Apostle Paul to see what we can learn about our own lives. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Heavenly Father, we invite you to be present with us here this evening. Pour out on us your love, your kindness, your Holy Spirit, that we might experience your grace and might find in you the fullness of knowledge that we are promised in Scripture. Be present with us. Worship with us. It is in Jesus' name we invite you. Amen. Join with us in song tonight.
so much. Jeez, praise be. So let's take some time and uh, pray together. There are lots of things in this earth that need our prayer, lots of people that are struggling and suffering. Uh, we, we have a friend who uh, has stage four cancer and we're uh, lifting him and his wife and up so that, uh, so that they may find comfort. We have another friend who is in a very similar circumstance and we're lifting uh, them up so that so that the Lord knows we care and they know we care because we want them we want them to find in him the grace and peace and mercy that are ours in Jesus Christ and uh, you know we're still praying of course for family member who was lost a few weeks back and we are working on uh, continuing to support and pray and hope for comfort and for strength in, in all of these situations. We also want to hold up our, our leadership, our nation, our county, our state, uh, all of those things for the sake of God's glory. So let's bow our heads for prayer. Heavenly Father, we indeed plead with you that your mercy and your love might pour out over this land, that you would restore to us the peace that passes all understanding, that you would bring to us your grace, your mercy, your comfort, that you would change the circumstances of our leadership, that you would cause them to wake up and to see in you and in your word the solution to our problems, the philosophies and and mysteries and silliness of humankind are not going to solve the problems that we face as a nation. And we ask, Jesus, that you and the power of your grace would pour yourself out on our president and our vice president, on our Congress and our Senate, on our state legislators and our state senators and on our governor, and that you would work in the power of your grace and in the fullness of your knowledge to make these things change in their lives, that you would open their eyes, that they may see your word and may follow after you and pursue peace. Oh Lord, earnestly we do pray that you would change us, that we might come to your grace, that we might be transformed, that we might show to the world around us your loving kindness, your compassion, your grace. And Jesus, earnestly we do pray on behalf of our family members and our friends. There is much in the way of suffering right now. Uh, those in need of prayer, those in need of healing care, in need of comfort, Lord, earnestly, as the struggles and the trials and the tribulations of life and, and closing off of life close in on, on these friends and family members, we do pray, Lord, that you would, you would be their comfort, that you would be their strong tower, their strength, that you would bring to them wholeness and, and cleansing and strength that they otherwise would not know so that they may rise up on wings of e like eagles, that they may run and not be weary. Oh, Lord, earnestly we do pray that your healing presence would cover our land, that you would bring peace, peace that passes all understanding down upon us as a land, as a nation, that you would bring about transformation, that people everywhere would wake up and see that grace and mercy and peace in Jesus Christ are the only answer. Oh Lord, earnestly we pray that you would teach us this night. Break open your word, make your word come alive to us as we study from the ministry of the Apostle Paul, help us to see 
in our own world how your grace and your peace enable us and strengthen us. Jesus, we ask these things that you might be glorified, that your name might be raised and lifted up. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So tonight we're going to talk from a couple of different passages about the Apostle Paul. I'm going to read uh, just a few verses in chapter 4, and then a little while later I'll read a few verses in chapter 11. We do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus as Lord, and ourselves as your bondservants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, Light shall shine out of the darkness, is the one who has shone into our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, so that the surpassing greatness of the power will be of God and not from ourselves. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not despairing, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying about in the body of the, the dying of Jesus so that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. During a prayer meeting, the church in Antioch were told by the Holy Spirit to send Paul and Silas out to preach the gospel to the Gentiles. And so they laid hands on them and they prayed. Now, Paul had, had been converted to Christ maybe two, two and a half years prior to this. He had been, he had been in Arabia, we, we are told later in his writings that he had been in Arabia for two years, seeking the face of the Lord, talking to Jesus, learning all of the things that Jesus had to teach him. And he went out. He and Silas, they, they, they left, and it was, it was a wild ride. It, it really was. Uh, you know, this is the guy that was singing hymns and praises to God in a jail, chained to a wall after having been beaten with rods, and the chains fell off, and the jail fell apart, and the jailer was converted, and his family was converted to Christ as a result. This is the guy that saw all kinds of amazing things in his life. This is the guy that wrote half of the New Testament of the Bible. But it wasn't easy. It was difficult. It was a strain. It was stressful. You see, their first stop was a blowout. It was a success on Cyprus. They went to the island of Cyprus, and they, they performed some miracles. They drove demons out of a magician. They won the, the pro-council of the island to Christ. And then they went on. And they went to Pisidian Antioch, and they preached the gospel in the synagogue. And uh, they were wowed by what they heard about Jesus as the Messiah until the whole city showed up the next Saturday, and they were jealous. And then they chased Paul and Silas out of Antioch. Well, it wasn't enough for them to chase them out of Antioch. You see, the Jews in that city were so jealous of Paul and what he had done with the gospel of Jesus and what, how he had influenced the entire Gentile community that they followed him and they plotted to stone him in Iconium. And so when he preached the gospel in Iconium, they showed up and he was chased out of the city. And then he went on to Lystra. And he, and he performed powerful miracle. And he experienced the fullness of the grace of God in preaching and people were being won to Christ. And the Jews that came from Antioch and went to Iconium also showed up at Lystra where they stirred up the people against Paul. And after that powerful miracle, after having won many of them to Christ, they stoned him and they left him for dead in the road. Yeah. What an exciting ministry. <laughs> maybe, maybe... <laughs> Maybe all of us need a little stoning once in a while to keep our senses straight. 
You see, they left Paul for dead. But he had this to say here in this passage in 2 Corinthians 4. As we received mercy, we do not lose heart. Think about that. Now, we got all kinds of things going on in our world right now. We've got all kinds of troubles. Everybody has troubles within the family. They have troubles with finances. They have troubles with organizing jobs and life and resources and have troubles with family members that are sick and troubles with anything and everything that we can imagine. Uh, we, we know n numerous people right now that are struggling with end-of-life issues. And we can say, yeah, you know, it's easy to lose heart. It's easy for us to, to be backed up against a wall and to be despaired and to be filled with grief and remorse and difficulty. We can say with Paul, we're afflicted in every way, uh, we're perplexed, we're persecuted, we're struck down, and we're always carrying around in our bodies the dying of the Lord Jesus. Yeah. But Paul said, we have received mercy. We have received mercy. And since we have received this mercy in verse 1 of chapter 4, we do not lose heart. And we don't preach ourselves. We preach Jesus Christ and ourselves as bondservants. Now, wait a minute. Uh, in other words, Jesus bought me. Jesus paid for my sin. Jesus paid for everything that I have done in the past. He owns me now, and I am now his slave. That's how Paul saw himself. You see, and because he saw himself in that way, God, who, who shines out of the darkness with a bright and wonderful light through Jesus Christ, has put this treasure in an earthen vessel. In other words, a clay pot made by a potter. Fragile, breaks easily. You drop it, it shatters. They used them to cook. They used them to store food. They used them to store grain. They used them to haul water. And he sees himself literally as a cracked pot. A pot that is broken, made of earthenware, and that is incapable of its own function, but is empowered because he has mercy through Jesus Christ. And because he has this mercy, he has a treasure held in, in an earthenware vessel, a treasure that is held in a piece of clay, that, a priceless treasure that is held in a piece of clay. And because of that, because of that, he can say, we're afflicted in every way, but we're not crushed. We're perplexed by everything around us, but we're not despairing. We are persecuted in the world out there, but we're not forsaken. We are struck down, but not destroyed, and always carrying about in the body the dying of Jesus. Now, why would Paul write this to the Corinthians? Well, you see, on top of everything else, the Corinthians were arrogant Greeks. And Greeks worshipped the human body and had for centuries and centuries and centuries. It was a part of their culture. Uh, the Olympic Games came from Greece and the celebration of human prowess and human power and human strength and human beauty is everywhere in their statues and in their, in their temples and in their artwork and in their cities. And, and it is displayed proudly and prominently. But Paul says, no. You know, we have this in, earth, in an earthenware vessel. It's not a fancy marble statue. It's, it's an earthenware vessel. It's something that's fragile, can be broken easily. And we hold a treasure that is beyond belief in that, in that vessel. And one of the reasons that he is writing this to the Corinthians is because they are being hypercritical of him. You see, Paul bow-legged, four foot four, bald, hooked nose, but, you know, just really an unattractive man in every way, was considered to be not beautiful. 
and considered to be a person who was without any honor. I mean, after all, he had persecuted the church. He hadn't actually walked with Jesus, and so therefore he couldn't be as good as Apollos or as good as Peter or as good as John or as good as any of the other apostles. And they were criticizing him, and they were making fun of him, and they were putting him down. And he, instead of defending himself and saying, whoa, wait a minute, he says, no. Jesus gave us mercy. And he gave us that mercy, and he put it in fragile, in fragile bodies. And yes, I've been beaten, and yes, my legs are bowed, and yes, I'm only four foot four and bald-headed. Yes, I have a hooked nose. Yes, I am a Jew. But Jesus has changed all of that. And when we look at our world out there, when we look at the mess that we're in as a society and, uh, and with our government and our leaders, the other, the other day some Arabs attacked a Jewish synagogue in Texas and they had come across an open border that's not being protected. That's horrid stuff. It's horrid stuff. But we are fragile. And in our fragile nature, we shouldn't lose heart because we have the mercy of God. And that is much, much more powerful than anything this world has to deliver. You see, he has the light of this world, the glory of God in an earthen vessel. How much more could we ask? If we seek Jesus in the same way that Paul sought Jesus, if we seek His strength and His might in our lives, no matter how fragile we are, no matter how broken we are, no matter how pushed down and how distraught we are, we still have this treasure that we are holding in an earthen vessel. You see, he understood he was afflicted. He understood he was not crushed, though. He understood that he was perplexed, but he also understood he was not despairing. And he understood that he was struck down, but he was not destroyed. These things are critical to us understanding what we are facing in this world around us and how it is we are going to deal with life. These things were critical to Paul being able to be beaten and and thrown in jail and held in stocks with his arms and his legs spread wide apart so he couldn't escape and still singing praise to God. Oh, how miserable he must have been. But he was singing hymns of praise. And an angel come down and released them and set them free. You see, the message hidden away here is a message that turns the world upside down reverses the, the horrible things that we see and turns them into things that are good. And we have that potential. We have literally that potential in our own lives. If like Paul, we have light in our earthenware skin, we know the glory of God. We literally know that while we can be afflicted, while we can be persecuted, while we can be perplexed, while we can be all of these things, we're, we're still not despairing. I find the daily revelations about the stupidity around us fascinating. The things that come out and that the press tries to either cover, hide, or lie about, the things that come out and politicians have to shuffle their feet and scratch their heads over, fascinating. But because of the light of Jesus, we should never be despairing over these things. We should never be despairing over the circumstances of life and the struggle and the difficulty. We have people that will stand with us in prayer in the midst of all of these circumstances. Paul had people who, even though he was bow-legged and short and bald and ugly, 
had people that were praying for him. And he had in his heart the fullness of Jesus. You see, Paul, the guy who powerfully brought salvation to the Gentile world, performed miracles, and was also raised up after being stoned to death, was accused of being phony. That was, that was what the Corinthians were saying to him. He was being phony. And so over in chapter 11, he gave an accounting of the things that went on in his life. And though he was physically unimpressive, though the Greeks in Corinth wrote him off, Paul gave them his resume. And here it is in chapter 11. Five times I received from the Jews 39 lashes. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I have spent in the deep. I have been on frequent journeys in dangers from rivers, dangers from robbers, danger from my countrymen, dangers from the Gentiles, dangers in the city, dangers in the wilderness, dangers on the sea, dangers among false brethren. I have been in labor and hardship through many sleepless nights, in hunger and thirst, often without food, in cold and exposure. Apart from such external things, there is the daily pressure on me of concern for all the churches. Wow. Why didn't he just quit, go do something else? Because he had this treasure in an earthen vessel. And he saw that treasure as infinitely more valuable than anything that happened to him or could be done to him. Think about this. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know if you know what scourging is like, but scourging is extremely painful, uh, extremely damaging to the flesh. And he received 39 lashes with a whip five times at the hands of the Jews. Five times. Five. Five times they scarred his back with 39 lashes. It wasn't that they stroked him a couple of times. It's that they continued to beat him 39 times. He says he was beaten with rods three times. Every Greek community of the, of the ancient world had what was called a lictor, uh, a sheriff, so to speak. And the lictor walked around with a bundle of rods. Rods were four feet long, and there were 13 of them in there. And in the middle of the bundle was an axe. And so the lictor in a community could, was called. He would come with his bundle, and he would hand out the rods, and he would pull out the axe. And depending on the circumstances and the charges against the person, he had the power to kill him right there or to beat him to death right there. And three times those 13 rods were handed out and three times they beat the Apostle Paul with those rods because they didn't like what he was saying. He was stoned and left for dead. They went back to town. His disciples gathered around him and he resurrected, came back to life. Stoning damages the skull and the body, breaks bones, leaves dents in your, in your physical being. It is a horrible way to die. And yet Paul was stoned and left for dead. He was shipwrecked three times. We're not told about all of the ways he was shipwrecked and all of the circumstances. But he says he spent a night and a day on the open sea. And he was in danger from nearly everything imaginable, from wild animals to people to Jews to even Christians. There were Christians that were after him, Christians that wanted to hurt him, Christians who, who say that they were believers in Christ, but they wanted him dead. Wow. And he still says, way back over here, we have this ministry as we received mercy. And we have that treasure in earthen vessels. So yes, his body's broken. Yes, his body's damaged. Yes, his body's been beaten. Yes, he has been through all kinds of horrible circumstances in this world. And still... He is giving praise and honor and glory 
and credit to Jesus Christ, King of kings and Lord of lords. This then was his life, his ministry to Jesus. This then did not crush, destroy, or despair Paul. And you just have to put your hands on your head and say, what would it take to disappoint him? Well, a lot, because he understood, and maybe this is our failing, he understood that he had the treasure of the peace of God that passes all understanding within him, and he had eternal life regardless of what else happened. He had eternal life. And while it probably didn't feel good, and while it probably was, dis, di, was disgusting and, and, and hard to understand, he was not crushed, he d was not destroyed, he did not despair, because he knew he had something better than anything anybody else had. He had Jesus. You see, these things of life that beat us down, they didn't beat Paul down. And he had worse things than any of well, I don't know anybody that's been stoned. I don't know anybody that's been beaten with rods. I don't know anybody that's been scourged. Don't know anybody that's spent a day and a night on the open sea. But the fact is, he didn't let these things get him down because of the one fact that he embraced, the truth about Jesus. You see, he has the light of the glory of God in his heart, and he holds it in a fragile clay pot that will rot and turn into dust and will shatter and be broken to pieces, and he will die, and he will die. He did die in a horrible way. They beheaded him. But he didn't despair. So what about today's world that scares you? What is it that's got you upset? Turn to Jesus. You have the light of his glory in your heart. Turn to Jesus. And simply, truthfully, believe. Let's pray. God of grace, we thank you. We rejoice in you. You are King and Lord of the universe. We thank you for the light of your glory that is in our hearts. Help us to stand on that light, regardless of the circumstances around us, regardless of, of what it is that has us worried and upset. Lord, help us that we might stand like Paul, tall and victorious, even though we're short, bow-legged, and ugly. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We hope that you will uh, come worship with us in person. Uh, we are here every Saturday night at 5 p.m. Come worship with us.